and action. Hey friends, Tori here with some more of Tori's tips. Um, we are going to be talking about some trees in this segment, which are often people's favorite and least favorite things to come paint. And if you've ever painted with us here at Pinot's Palette, uh, trees make up the vast majority of our paintings, but that's because landscapes are so beautiful and inspiring. So I have a couple different tricks of the trade in terms of painting trees. Now, in our last segment, we talked about brushes. You can use a round brush or a flat brush to do your branches. But here's a little example of things we want to avoid and things we like. Okay, this first tree is a little, little edgy, right? We have a 90 degree angled branch and they're kind of like pew, pew, pew. What we're going for is more of a smooth transition from our trunk up and out to our branches. We wanna think of peel the banana, right? Or merging into traffic. You wouldn't just go boop. So that can be a little rough for these examples here. Also in this tree, our trunk is a little bit bigger. That's a key signature of a tree. Trees are always a little juicier at the bottom and thinner at the tips when the branches start to peel away. Now I have a little example here too that you don't even quite see a lot of the tree but you can tell that this is where the branches go out. We have it thicker here on our branch where it meets our tree, which is in this ominous space here. Um, and then our branches get thinner and thinner as they go away from our trunk or our base and they kind of peel away. Kind of like that soft kind of letter Y shape, but they're peeling away. They're not jutting out super hard at hard angles, okay? So I'm gonna show us a couple of examples um, with our two different brushes that we use here. We'll be using some black paint. Now there's a bunch of different types of trees as well. Now I'm gonna start with my round brush to show us a little example. Now of course I'm gonna hold my brush kind of flat and give it a twirl in my paint and pull away so my brush is at a nice point. Now if I were to do a tree, let's say for instance this is my ground. Holding our brush just like a pencil, some people like to start from the bottom and work their way up. So with that, our trunk is gonna be a little bit bigger. So what I like to do is give it some nice pressure for my trunk. And as I'm going taller in a way, I'll release my pressure slightly and curve out a little bit. So notice how my branch is thinner at the tip and thicker at the trunk. Now I can always go back in and thicken up my trunk. Something I like to think and keep in mind while I'm painting is that I can always make something bigger. It's quite difficult to go back and try to make it appear a little bit smaller. So always a safe bet to start a little bit thinner. And then if we're sticking with going bottoms up, I can paint right over top of my trunk and light, lighten my pressure and peel away. Light pressure. And you can take your time. This doesn't have to be something quick. Start from the branch, peel away like you're peeling the banana, merging into traffic. If I started doing this, ooh, just not quite as natural looking. So a quick little thing you can do to fix something like that is just add that peel. So what I'll do at this hard angle is I'm gonna make it look like it's curving out of my tree. And now it looks a little more natural, like it's peeling away, a little more intentional. Now, as I've said, our trunks are gonna be a little bit thicker than the rest of our tree. As we go away into our branches, it gets thinner and thinner. But what happens if this branch is that thick? Oh no, that is all right. Anything below that, we wanna match its thickness or make it even a little bit thicker. So all I need to do is just add more pressure to this branch. Remember, we can always make it bigger. My trunk's a little bit heftier at the bottom. Maybe pull a branch or two off of this and just kind of adjust the thickness of the rest of my tree. Now it looks like it belongs. Worst case scenario, add a bunch of leaves over top of that happy accident of a branch. But you can always do little things like this to kind of adjust. Okay. Now a round brush is great. You can manipulate it 
um, a little more easier than a flat brush, especially for a smaller tree. But what if I have a tree that takes up most of my canvas? For me, I prefer a flat brush. I'm gonna show you how. All right, so I'm taking out a flat brush. Now this brush has been a little more loved. In order to flat this, flatten this brush, I uh, will just dry it off, scrape it flat in my paint, flip it over, scrape it flat. The paint and the scraping should flatten your brush a decent amount. In some cases, you just need to get a, a fresher brush, but I've been able to flatten this brush pretty well using my paint and the pressure. So as I said, you can do a bottoms up or you can do top to bottom. Either way, we're gonna turn it this way so we have some more space. Now I'm holding it on the ice skate part of my brush. Give it a little more pressure at the bottom. Now as I push, my bristles are gonna to start to fan out. So I'll have to go back and flatten my brush. This is something you might have to do repeatedly as you, as you kind of go through your painting and use your brush. Remember, these are your tools, so you wanna make sure they're working to your benefit. Play around with your pressure. I pressed hard initially, and now I'm pressing lightly. Go back, flatten my brush. Now I'm using the ice skate of my brush, which is that tip part of my brush we talked about in the last segment. Now you can always start out here, start out here and meet into your branch. Now I want to thicken it up as it touches my trunk. Go back and flatten my brush. So you can always lead into it or you can peel away. Now your tree might have multiple branches. They're allowed to touch. They're allowed to run into each other. It's a tree. So if I have a branch here, it's okay to cross that one over. Peel this one away and away. Pressing lightly as I want my branches to be small or thin rather. Always go back and flatten your brush as much as you need to. A little bit heavier pressure to thicken up where my branch meets my trunk. And notice how I'm doing those gentle Y's. I'm gonna peel the banana. Not doing so much of this and this. Then we start getting to almost a cactus kind of look. So if this happens, I've got that weird stick angle. All I have to do is curve it down. All right, so curving it in. Flatten my brush, curving it in. So now it's a little bit smoother. Now, this part of my tree looks a little bulky and this one looks a little bit thin. So what do I do? Just thicken up our base. It's all about that base, about that base. Oh yeah. Happy little tree, I think so. Now there's many different types of trees. Sometimes you'll paint a tree and you won't even paint the branches. You're just gonna paint uh, maybe like a silhouette of a tree or like a pine tree for instance so for that flat brushes are so great i'm going to take out one of my flat brushes make sure it's dry flip and scrape my brush so it's evenly coated in the paint and maybe i will start with my trunk just so i know where my tree goes so i'm going to use the blade of my brush maybe i'm mapping out where a couple trees go light pressure all i need is the lines now you can do something called stippling. Now stippling just means dab, 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 right? But keep in mind your pressure. If, keep in mind if you're not lifting your brush up. If you're just dragging your brush down, you're not seeing the, the dabbing of your bristles. Um, also, if I have a lot of paint on my brush, I'm not gonna see the texture of the brush. So I'm making sure I'm scraping it kind of flat. I don't need a ton of paint. And what I'm gonna do is if I'm at the very tippy top of my tree, that's where it's thinnest. So my blade is vertical. I'm gonna dab, 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 dab. And as I get a little bit lower, I can turn my blade flat. Dab, 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 dab. And I'm kind of doing this zigzaggy pattern. I want to, I want to cover up maybe most of my trunk. And I'm also kind of tilting my brush back and forth as I go down. 
hold my tree a little bit bigger at the bottom and no floating tree trunks. I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So you can kind of see the texture of that brush. Now this brush is very crisp, it's very flat. I enjoy using a brush that's maybe a little bit more loved to get the same effect. I'm not gonna use as much paint and I am just kind of dabbing it in the paint this time. My brush is a little crazy, look at that. This is great for a texture for trees as well. So I can even go to this big boy here. Dab, 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 dab. I'm not dragging my brush. I am dabbing so I can see the texture of those bristles. Now if I have too much paint on my brush, it might become more, you know, opaque. I can't quite see through it as well. If I press lightly, I can see the tips of my bristles. I can see through my leaves, my bundles of leaves there. So takeaway should be thinner at the top, a little wider at the bottom, a little more dense around my trunk. And we're gonna bring that skirt all the way down so my tree trunk isn't just floating there. Lots of little, happy little trees. All right, so the takeaway, in my opinion, flat brushes are better used for larger trees that take up a lot of your canvas. If you have some smaller detail-y type of um, trees, use a small round detail brush, but whatever brush works best for you. You learn by doing, so give it a try and uh, let me know how it goes. Hope to see you next time in the studio. We'll be making trees soon. Cheers.